do you have knee pain and you've tried everything and it's not working? You tried over the counter Tylenol, you tried aspirin, you tried to leave, you tried Bengay, you tried rapid and it's not helping and you don't want to have surgery, but you do want it to feel better, then this video is for you. We're going to talk today about cortisone or knee gel. Which one should you pick and why? Dr. Orlando Landrum, a Harvard and Cornell trained MD who specializes in interventional pain, regenerative medicine, and neuromodulation techniques. I've helped thousands of patients be able to get their lives back and eliminate their pain. So cortisone or knee gel for knee pain, which is best? So first, one of the things that we're going to do is talk a little bit about the aspect of knee anatomy. And so when we talk about knee anatomy, one of the things that we really want to kind of get into is what are the different elements that can hurt? So the things that can hurt are going to be everything from the aspect of the muscle to the tendons, like the quadriceps tendon, patella tendon, the areas at the cartilage where the aspects of the femur, the meniscus that's in place, the ligaments that are in here that you may have some degree of laxity. All of those elements can give you some problems, some challenges, and some issues. So as we kind of take a look at this picture, it has everything on it. It can show that you have some, can have some quadriceps tendon, as I mentioned earlier. You can have changes with the aspect of the kneecap and the patella. You can have bursitis that's in place. You can have meniscus tears. You can have medial collateral ligament issues. You can have arthritis of the joint. You can have bursitis. You can have osteoarthritis. slaughters. You can have the elements of um, osteochondritis. Um, you can have iliotibial band issues, a whole host of things that can give you a problem with the aspect of the knee. My question is, is what are we going to do about it? So after we tried some of the conservative therapies, we tried some degree of physical therapy and other things along those lines, and we may have tried some complementary or integrative therapies, we may come to the point of us talking about an injection directly into the knee. Most people have heard of cortisone, but they don't know anything about like what's the background and the history. So it was developed uh, inf kind of famously at the aspect of Mayo Clinic. Um, for 18 years, it was put forth together and kind of certified and clarified from 1930 to his first injection in 1948 with a patient who had debilitating rheumatoid arthritis. And some of the aspects of the individuals who kind of came up with the context of this is a chemist named Edward Calvin Kendall and the aspect of his partner, Philip Hinch, who later went on to receive Nobel Prizes for their works. It was the aspect of cortisone that was really a useful element of improving overall pain, but it wasn't without having some of its own consequences when injected and when it's injected multiple times. So we talk about different steroid types. There are numerous in nature that fit within the context of corticosteroid. Everything from betamethasone to cortisone, as we've talked about before, to dexamethasone, to methylprednisolone, to prednisolone, to prednisone, to triamcinolone, that have various different changes in the molecular formula, as well as different treatment options that might be optimal for them. But this is really one of the key things when we talk about the aspect of steroid, is what are the benefits? One of the things we think about immediately is the aspect of pain relief and anti-inflammatory status. But there's some other things that take place too. It can be used for anti-allergy. It can be used for immunosuppression, which we have to be careful about for those people that have issues with that at their baseline. And also can be uh, reasons for having use for blood vessel permeability or decreasing blood vessel permeability, which has its own consequences um, within other contexts. When we take a look at the side effects, the side effects can be numerous in nature and something that we really need to kind of gauge. So some of those side effects can be everything from infections and myopathies that are present within the aspect of the muscle. They can be osteoporosis and early onset, as well as the aspect of aseptic necrosis of the femur that's present in the bone. It can be skin thinning that takes place within that context. Within the metabolic regimen, it can be hyperglycemia, meaning increased blood glucose or increased sugars. It can cause weight gain, it can cause fluid retention, and it can cause a cushionoid appearance. The other things is that it can be able to cause some degree of neuropsychiatric disorders. It can cause cataracts, it can cause glaucoma, and it can cause hypertension. There's a whole host of potential problems for supposedly this simple injection of cortisone or some 
a class of drugs within that family that we really need to be understanding of and have an idea about whether those things might cause us some degree of issue. So knee gel, the other name for it is something that's called visco supplementation. So it derives from the hyaluronic acid or specifically the aspect of the rooster comb that's present that forms this hyaluron uh, lubricant, which mimics the aspect of synovial fluid within the context of the knee. Visco supplementation developed a little bit later than the aspect of cortisone. The very first ones were in the 1960s, with the second generation being in the 1980s, and then the American College, American College of Rheumatology finally, finding, finally recognizing the aspect of uh, visco supplementation in uh, the early 2000s. So knee gel is numerous in nature. They have a number of different products, which we're gonna talk about in just a second. But basically there's differences uh, according to the number of injections that are done, as well as the duration of action and how long it will last for. Sometimes it's only in the context of about maybe about three months or so. Sometimes it can last as long as six months, if not longer. And the variances in molecular weights are one of the ways in which it distinguishes itself. And so these are some of the different ones that are out there. You can have Synvisc, you can have Monovisc, you can have Gel1, you can have Gelsin, you can have Supart, you can have Genvisc, you can have Hylogen. And so all those different types of uh, uh, um, visco supplementation or knee gels exist as potential treatments. So what can we talk about when we really kind of get down into the nitty gritty of knee pain and what are some of the side effects that can occur? Long story longer is that if you take an oral medicine, you might have some GI issues and you might have some problems with your uh, liver and maybe your increased blood pressure that might result. If you take another type of oral medicine, you may have some problems with drowsiness, you may have some skin rash, you may have some abdominal pain. If you inject cortisone, you could potentially have some challenges with pain and swelling as well as long-term damage to the cartilage and connective tissue. If you use visco supplementation, you could have what's quote unquote called a hot knee, which is mild temporary injection site pain, swelling, and heat with redness. So at the end of the day, what would you decide to do? What do you pick to do in this context? And so the things that you would pick, consider picking to do or want to kind of really focus on is the following. Because I have another patient that asked me this. Well, if it's your family member, what would you do? Depends on the context, but let's say everything all being even, if I had to make a choice between cortisone and the aspect of knee gel, I'd pick knee gel hands down. The degree of uh, potential challenges that you're gonna have long term or less. But if I truly had my druthers and I could pick anything that I wanted, I'd pick an orthobiologic. And the reason why is because not only would it temporize the aspect of the pain, we may get some benefit potentially structurally and it may be a much more long-term sustainable treatment option. So I'm Dr. Orlando Landry from Cutting Edge Integrative Pain. If you want to know how to be able to biohack your pain, meaning take control and use different techniques, different treatments, and technology in order how to be able to improve your pain and lead a more functional life, stay tuned to our channel and continue to follow us. Thank you so much for your time and have a great day.